For the first time since the ISS era, a new space station is preparing to launch. And this one wasn't built by NASA. After a full sequence of structural, propulsion, power, and on-orbit validation tests, Haven 1 is now targeting a May launch aboard SpaceX's Falcon 9. If the schedule holds, it will become NASA's first new destination in low Earth orbit in decades, and a critical test case for how human spaceflight continues after the ISS. What makes this moment significant is not just the launch date. It's how fast this station reached it, who funded it, and why NASA is watching closely. Because Haven 1 is not a concept anymore. It's flight hardware, already proven in space. And it may quietly redefine what the next generation of space stations looks like. As NASA approaches Phase 2 of its commercial Low Earth Orbit Destinations program, VAST is moving with unusual urgency. The company is accelerating work on Haven 1, not because NASA asked it to, but because Phase 2 will demand proof, not promises. VAST developed Haven 1 entirely outside NASA's Phase 1 funding. The goal was straightforward, gain real operational experience and flight heritage before proposing a much larger system. That larger system is Haven 2, which VAST plans to submit for Phase 2 selection, potentially as early as the first quarter of 2026. Phase 2 changes the scale of the competition. Unlike Phase 1, which spread smaller awards across multiple companies, Phase 2 is expected to provide significantly larger funding, possibly hundreds of millions of dollars, but only to one or two winners. The objective is no longer concept development, it is design maturity, on-orbit demonstration, and certification of a true ISS successor. That makes timing critical. VAST's strategy is to arrive at Phase 2 with hardware already proven in space. To do that, the company is aiming to launch Haven 1 ahead of every direct competitor, targeting May 2026 on a SpaceX Falcon 9. If successful, Haven 1 would become the world's first privately operated commercial space station. This matters in the current policy environment. NASA is under growing pressure to transition away from the ISS while maintaining an uninterrupted human presence in low Earth orbit, a station that is already flying, already tested, and already dockable carries disproportionate weight. So far, Haven 1 is tracking toward that goal. In early 2026, the station had entered final integration and testing following successful primary structure qualification, docking hardware verification, and validation of its Haven demo systems. Earlier, the company completed full structural welding on both the qualification unit and the flight article, followed by painting in mid-October. That cleared the program for the next phase, installation of the hatch and the domed window. On October 29th, the completed primary structure, now including both components, passed pressure and load acceptance testing at Mojave, California. One day later, the structure was transported back to VAST's headquarters in Long Beach, for final weld inspections and system integration. In parallel, VAST completed fit checks of its passive docking adapter. The hardware complies with NASA's International Docking System standard, making it compatible with crew vehicles such as SpaceX's Dragon. What looks like a simple circular port is, in practice, a precision machined interface that enables safe, repeatable docking in orbit. This unit uses a modern probe and drogue architecture and is believed to be the first flight-ready docking system built specifically for a private space station. Then, on November 2nd, VAST took a quieter but equally important step. The company launched Haven Demo, an orbital technology testbed designed to validate the core systems required for a human-rated station, or directly in space. Haven Demo does not carry life support systems or crew accommodations. Instead, it focuses on proving the fundamentals – structure, avionics, thermal behavior, power, and communications. The mission launched successfully aboard a SpaceX Falcon 9. While Haven Demo continued operating nominally in orbit, VAST kept moving through Haven, one's remaining test objectives on the ground. In early December, the company confirmed completion of four system-level checks that matter most 
once a station is no longer reachable by hands-on repair. First, backup fault management systems were verified, redundant pathways designed to take over if primary components fail. Second, VAST demonstrated over-the-air software update capability, allowing flight computers to be patched or upgraded directly from Earth. Third, the company completed calibration of critical guidance, navigation, and control instruments, the sensors and processors that determine the station's orientation and orbital behavior. And fourth, engineers verified propulsion tank heating, ensuring propellants remain within operational temperature ranges and do not freeze during extended exposure to space. All four tests passed. Together, they mark the difference between a spacecraft that can survive briefly in orbit and one designed to remain there safely. At the same time, VAST advanced propulsion qualification work. The company conducted ground-based vacuum testing of its SIF thrusters, developed by Impulse Space, using a large thermal vacuum chamber. The thrusters were repeatedly fired under space-like conditions to validate durability and consistency. The results exceeded requirements. The units completed more than 50,000 firings without failure. That data carries particular weight because propulsion architecture scales rapidly. Haven 1 will rely on 48 of these thrusters operating in coordination for attitude control and maneuvering. A smaller three-thruster configuration has already flown on Haven Demo, providing early in-space performance data to anchor the ground test results. Thermal control followed next. In mid-December, VAST completed vibration qualification testing of Haven 1's radiator system at its Long Beach facility. The test ensured the radiator can withstand launch loads while maintaining its ability to reject heat from the station's internal cooling loops once in orbit. For a long-duration platform, reliable heat rejection is not optional. It defines operating limits. Power generation is now entering its final checks. As of January 10th, the 12 deployable solar array wings designated for Haven, one flight, are undergoing acceptance inspection at VAST headquarters. These units will supply continuous electrical power once deployed in orbit, closing one of the last major subsystem milestones ahead of launch integration. Taken as a whole, VAST's progress represents an unusually fast development cycle for a commercial space station, especially when measured against programs that began years earlier with direct NASA funding. Founded in 2021, VAST publicly announced Haven 1 in 2023. By early 2025, the company had completed structural qualification testing. In November 2025, it launched Haven Demo, placing core station technologies into orbit less than four years after the company's creation, and entirely on private capital. That pace stands out in the context of NASA's commercial LEO program. Haven Demo validated propulsion, avionics, and control systems in the real space environment within roughly two and a half years of VAST's founding. Meanwhile, Haven 1's flight hardware moved rapidly through production. Primary structures completed in September 2025, final welding and painting by October, and full station integration on track for a May 2026 launch aboard a SpaceX Falcon 9. From initial concept to orbital deployment, the timeline remains under three years. If the schedule holds, Crewed operations will follow quickly. VAST is targeting its first four-person mission via Crew Dragon for late June 2026, roughly one month after launch. Over an initial three-year operational period, Haven 1 is designed to support up to 160 astronaut days, positioning it as a functional outpost rather than a demonstration platform. The contrast with other contenders is difficult to ignore. NASA awarded roughly $415 million under Phase 1, beginning in 2021, to teams led by Axiom, Sierra Space, Blue Origin, and Nanorax, now Voyager Space. As of early 2026, none have launched orbital hardware. VAST, by comparison, reached orbit without Phase 1 subsidies and is now preparing a full station deployment. That said, the schedule is not the product of isolation. SpaceX's readiness plays a central role in making it possible. Falcon 9's high production cadence and flight rate allow VAST to secure a dedicated May 2026 launch window 
without the bottlenecks that affect less frequently flown vehicles. Beyond launch services, SpaceX is deeply integrated into Haven One's operational concept. Crew Dragon provides transportation, docking, and supplemental consumables such as air and water. Starlink supplies high bandwidth communications through laser-linked satellites, supporting low latency data transfer, video calls, and real-time payload streaming. In practical terms, Falcon 9 deploys Haven 1 into orbit, after which Crew Dragon docks and remains attached during crewed missions. While docked, Dragon contributes electrical power and life support redundancy for approximately 30-day stays. This approach allows Haven 1 to avoid carrying a fully standalone environmental control and life support system, reducing mass, complexity, and certification burden. Operational integration continues on the ground. Mission Control leverages SpaceX's Florida infrastructure for shared processing, while during docking phases, Dragon's Draco thrusters assist with attitude stabilization and power supply. That capability reduces the load on Haven 1's control moment gyroscopes and solar arrays, simplifying the station's architecture and cutting structural mass by an estimated margin approaching 20%.